This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have an LSE 1000 Maytag laundry center and during spin the um, basket is wobbling around way too much so we're going to be putting in new felt dampers and also putting a little lubrication on there too. To do this we have it unplugged. We're going to be um, taking out these two screws on the bottom of the front panel and then we'll hinge out the front panel about 45 degrees. It'll release. We can take it off and I'm just going to show you guys. I plugged it back in, set it for spin and it picks up spin pretty good but the customer complained that it was wobbling around quite a bit. It seems pretty good bit of wobble but it's an older one and the dampers uh, kind of wear out over time and they don't glide as well and that creates a situation where it rocks around too much during spin makes a lot of noise so to fix it we got it unplugged again we're going to take out these two screws here that are holding on the top of the front panel i'm going to take out a little quarter inch screw there move these little catches back and i'm going to grab the whole washer independent of the upper dryer assembly i'm going to pull it toward me by about a foot and a half i'm going to get it out toward me and then i'll disconnect the um, power cord here in the back just wiggle it off i'm also removing two screws here in the back on the top panel because i want the top panel to be able to um, be loose because I need it to, I need the tub to be able to really lean heavily from side to side and to do that I need the top panel loose so I'm going to put in this electrical box here into the spring I'm going to push the uh, tub away from me to extend the spring and put this electrical box in to hold the spring in the extended position and then I can pull the tub toward me and I can pull the spring off of this little eyelet. And now I can remove this whole uh, spring assembly by just tilting it and pulling it out. It's going to give me more room to work. I'm going to do that for the back spring here on the right side too. I'm going to pull the tub toward me so it bends toward me, put the spring or put the electrical box over the spring in the, ex in, in the extended position. And then I'm going to push the tub toward my right and toward the back to see if I can get the um, spring to come off. So I'm going to push it really heavily in that direction. might be good to have someone help you do this too. While, while they push, you can try to disconnect it off the eyelet. I'm putting a little electrical box here too to lift the top up to take the pressure off of the tub so that the tub can move more. Just make it easier to move. Now I'm going to put an electrical box on the left back spring. I pull the tub toward me to the right and then extend the spring and then put the electrical box on. And then once the box is on, I can disconnect it from the eyelet below. So now um, all three springs are disconnected and now I'm going to lean the machine back at an angle and put a couple of blocks of two by fours underneath the big pole in the middle. Now when I set the washer down, the whole um, transmission and uh, tub assembly will lift up by about three to four inches. You can put a couple more blocks in there too to get it to go a little higher. But you're trying to get this area to open up and then you can see the felt damper pads there's three of them these are the old ones and we're going to try to scrape them off i just using a paint scraper to start it off and then i'm going to be pulling it be careful of the uh, metal ring above where my left hand is it's very sharp and if your finger were to touch it and you were to move it quickly it could cut your finger cut your wrist so just be really careful as you're pulling these felt pads off. You could use a paint scraper to kind of help you. So I'm pulling on the pad as I'm 
whacking it with the paint scraper to help break the contact cement from before. This is probably from at least 20 years ago when it was done at the factory. So there's the old damper pad. It's just a piece of felt. There's the new one. The kit comes with three damper pads and also um, three vials of lubricant. Now I'm doing the damper pad in the back on the right hand side. Again, be really careful that that uh, metal doesn't cut you. It might be good to wear gloves. These are really good machines. They last, they last a long time. This one made tag used to really make a great machine using the paint, paint scraper to, to scrape off some of the um, glue that's still on there, the old glue. So we got the third one off. I'm using a wire brush to clean up that area the best I can. If I can get it down all the way to just raw metal again, that'd be great. I also used a little bit of uh, uh, Berryman's carburetor cleaner to try to help remove some of the adhesive, but you don't really need to. A wire brush is probably enough. So you just got to get it on the sides and in the back, all the way around. Again, be careful that you don't get cut. If you can't get all the glue off, it's okay, but just do the best you can. Really, your goal is to make sure all the felt's off. You do need a little tube of contact cement also. This is high temperature contact cement. You can get it um, at an appliance store or online. I'm gonna put a film of it on this first damper pad. I basically want to get it on all of uh, one side of the damper pad, like completely cover it with the contact cement. And then once you have it all covered, you're going to go ahead and put that on to the metal. And you want to get it on there as evenly as you can. You want there to be a little gap at the top of about a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch there between the top of the damper pad and the top of the metal rim. You can kind of see in the video, it's about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch, it doesn't have to be exact. The next damper pad will go on about an inch to an inch and a quarter away from the first one. It's going to be the same technique. Same with the third one, about an inch. You want to have them be as, as equal as possible to form a nice ring. They won't touch, though. though there will be a gap in between them of about an inch. But I'm just looking at it now to get the symmetry right. So this is the second pad, putting on the contact cement. And then I'll go ahead and place it in position. And if you don't have it exactly right, it's okay because the contact cement will not bind right away, so you can still move it around a little bit. It's hard to do because you can't really see well. I did end up using my camera to help me when I did the uh, third one. Once you get the pad about where you want it, then you want to push down with your fingers to apply pressure to get it to hold nice and tight. And then once you get everything done, all three pads glued in, it'd be great if you could wait about 15 minutes before you let the tub assembly rest down on it again. So I'm pushing down with my fingers to get that second one on there really tight. The damper pad with the lubricant just allows for a really good bearing surface and then the tub can move around readily on that surface and that helps it to spin really well. If it binds though, then the spin gets really crazy and it bangs around a lot. So here's the third pad. There is another procedure too where you can remove the 
pulley on the bottom and the brake assembly and then pull the whole tub off to give you a lot of room but it takes longer so I kind of like to do this one where you just put it on a couple of two by fours to create about four inches of area where you can work. So I'm now just pressing down on all three of them to make sure they're securely in position. And then I'll have three vials of silicone grease and I'll put, I'll open a vial and put the entire vial on one pad and then go to the second pad and then to the third pad. There's the big pulley underneath. So here's the vial, I took the top off, I'm squirting it on there, and then I'm gonna use my fingers to work it in. It is possible also to just buy this kit and not replace the pads, but just put the lubricant on. And that usually will cure the problem, but this one was just so far gone that it was important to uh, replace the pads. So do try to get all of the lubricant out of each one of the vials and then apply that entire amount to the one pad and then go to the next one. There we go, so that one's pretty much done. And we'll just repeat the same thing on the other two. Again, being weary that you don't slice your finger on that, uh, that rim up above where my finger is now. All right, we got them all three lubricated, so now we're gonna take out the blocks and let the 15 minutes of glue time has elapsed. We're gonna let the tub assembly come back down onto it still don't want to really use this for maybe one day to let the glue really set. So I'm going to reconnect the spring in the back onto the eyelet. If I lean the tub over to the back and left, that'll help me to get that on there. Again, if you have a second person to help, that'd be great. So now I'll do the one in the back on the right. I'm going to lift up on the eyelet and push in with my shoulder going back and to the right so I can get that eyelet on. It's good to keep the uh, electrical boxes on the springs if possible while you do uh, the, the first two for sure. It just makes the springs longer so it makes it easier. We got those two done. So now we're putting on the front one again. Get the top part put on correctly, twist it around. And now I have to pull toward me. The back electrical box just popped off. The pull toward me to get this eyelid on. I'm gonna pull with one hand and then try to feed it on with my right hand. Okay, got it. Now we're gonna take the electrical boxes off of the two that are left. Get the front one off. Got the two back ones off, great. So now we can just reassemble everything. We're gonna get the two screws put in again in the back to hold on the uh, top panel. tightened up. I'm going to reach down and grab that cable that hooks up to control the washing machine and I'll wiggle that back on. Make sure it's on there really secure. 
Here we go. Okay. All right, I'm gonna tighten the front screw that holds on the top panel on the right hand side. Put the uh, bleach tube back on. I'm doing the one on the left hand side, same thing. Is it that one there? All right, I'm gonna put the little screw that holds on the pressure sensor back into position. And now I have to push the whole thing back in to the dryer assembly. And just take your time on this. It's kind of tricky. There's not a lot of room. You might have to push, wiggle, and just keep Keep going at it until you get it all the way back in. Using my foot, pushing it, wiggling it. There we go. Now I have the top, our front panel put in at 45 degrees to, to get the top clips to catch. And then I'll go ahead and let the front panel hinge down and then I'll put in the two screws on the bottom to hold it on. And we are done. Again, I would wait about a day, before, let the glue really dry before I took it for a spin. Those screws lined up, put them back in, and we are done. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed, and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.